Hey all, we are a bunch of students and a teacher at Allen High School flipping our kinetics unit for AP and IBHL chemistry. And right now we were working on determining rate law expressions from experimental data. Now our second example is given here and it already has an unusual aspect associated with it. Here's our balanced equation. Now the author of the question or the original scientist actually who came up to the, with this came up with this data so it's clear that the authors and the or the scientists were trying to determine the impact of these concentrations on the rate but look at this how interesting that is do you notice that they're studying what shows up as a final balanced value the H plus is showing up there and it's actually going to show up in our rate law expression. And it does tell us that it is an acid catalyzed bromination. So that means there's some acid present and at least one of the H pluses didn't cancel. Uh, it's hard to say because we don't have a mechanism to tell us step by step what happened. But you're given the data, you want to see if that data, that value alters the rate. So we have to treat each one of these. So if we did our overall rate law expression and we want to do a generic one to get us started so we know what we're taking a ratio, what the experiment is proposing is that the rate is equal to the concentration, uh, K, excuse me, times the concentration of your acetone, propanone, that's a C double bonded oxygen in the middle of carbons to some power. You can't use parentheses there. I know I started to do that, but you cannot use parentheses there. It's the brackets that communicate molarity. So you have to be very careful that you use brackets there. And then Br2 to some power. And the scientists are trying to determine where the H plus, what role the H plus plays in here. So we have to do three of those different ratios. And I'm going to set up a couple of them explicitly and then give you the answer to the third. And then we're gonna wrap back around and see how we might have been able to simplify this if we were just observant. So if I wanna find the propanone between one and five, the propanone changes but bromine and H plus are constant. If I want to find the bromine, I'm going to use one and two because it is independently varied and the other two molarities are controlled. And then for the H plus, it's those two experiments. So I've set out my strategy. I'm going to start with the propanone here and I'm taking a ratio of five to one. Remember, if you take the larger value over the smaller value, your math will come out, come out easier, but it won't matter in the end. All right, you'll be just fine. Uh, just may take a little bit more calculator work. 5.7 times 10 to the minus fifth on the bottom. And then we'll have K over K. Now, you don't have to write that K over K in. If you get it now, you don't have to include that. It's understood that it cancels. I keep putting it in so that as we're learning, people can see that I'm taking ratios of those generic rate laws. Oops, come on, Mimeo. Okay, there we go. Sort of a C, there we go. And then we're going to have to extend our little line there. We have our bromine, that's to the X power. Then we've got our bromine two to the y okay and we have our h plus to the z now we're taking these all from experiment five so i'm going to plug in the values from experiment five and then i'm going to do the same thing in the bottom ch3 co ch3 but this time i'm going to plug in the values for one okay so that's our overall strategy. You do not have to show me this much detail. I'm just trying to show you enough detail so that your minds can firmly wrap around what we're doing here. So we wanna pick 
out values again so that these guys will cancel. And we do that between five and one. And so this, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel my case so I don't have to write them over again. And then I'll prove that the others cancel. So this will be 0 0.40 to the x, 0 0.05 to the y, and 0 0.05 to the z. And then I'm gonna put that over the number one, divide it by, remember the ca case cancel, 0 0.30 to the x, 0 0.05 to the y, 0 0.05 to the z. And we get this narrowed down to just a, you know the one unknown and one equation, 0 0.05 to the z. And you don't have to write that down and you don't have to write that down. Really, all we need to see is this term and this term. And that's enough for us, the readers, those who are evaluating your work, to see whether or not you understand the concept. Now, if you do that algebra and carry it through to the end, you'll find out that it is first order with respect to that propanone. So now let's attack the bromine. Some of you may have already noticed something interesting about the bromine, but I'm not going to quite give that away. So I'll go ahead and keep our, let's get rid of some of this stuff here. Now, for the bromine, we want to take a slightly different one and just clear some space here. Now, uh, we're going to take two over one. And I know some of this math is going to be silly at first, but I'm trying to make a point. So I take two over one, and you notice the rate didn't change. Hmm. So then it'd be k times 0 0.30. I now know that's to the one. So if there was a problem and I couldn't find a place where that propanone was held constant, I could just carry it along in my algebra. You know, a little, little less, a little more plugging and chugging, but by and large, pretty straightforward. And then this is 0.30 to the one. Fortunately, it does cancel and 0 0.05 to the x and 0 0.05 to the y. Okay. Um, I know I called those x's, whoops, wrong one, x's and y's, but it really doesn't matter. All right, here we go. So let's cancel. That cancels. This cancels. If it didn't, no big deal. Extra algebra, that cancels. Now, Again, I know it seems some of you have picked up on this already that this is a lot of work for something you can get much easier. What we get here is that one is equal to two to the y. Well, that means that y is equal to zero. So we have it zero order with respect to bromine. Now, you didn't have to do all this math. All you really needed to do was notice that you had two rates that are the same. So I'd recommend looking through your data, see those two rates that are the same, and say, aha, rate didn't change. What happened with the data? Well, if only one substance changed, if two changed, we can't do this. But if one substance was the only thing that changed and the rate didn't change, it means the rate doesn't depend on that substance. And you can simply make a statement to that effect. You don't have to do the mathematics. Either way you choose is fine. You could have just said between experiments one and two, the rate remains unchanged. Bromine's the only thing that is altered, bromine concentration. Since bromine concentration didn't change the rate, it must be zero order, something to that effect. Now, if you did something similar for the H+, plus, what we would find for the H+, plus is that it is first order as well. So that would give us our orders and it said to deduce the rate law expression. So that means that rate is equal to K times our propanone, that's acetone by the way. Propanone is the IUPAC name for acetone, which used to be used in a lot of nail polish, but not quite as much anymore, H plus. Bromine doesn't show up at all. Now, because it doesn't show up, once you determine that it's zero order, so the sooner you can determine that, the better. You can ignore it for the rest of the experiment. It won't have an impact. 
Now, it says, what is the numerical value for K? Again, these are all at the same temperature. Therefore, they all have the same K. Doesn't matter which we pick. So I'm going to do the 5.7. I'm just picking the first one for no reason other than I'll have less of a likelihood to shift my eyes and mix up my numbers. And so it's going to be K times 0 0.30 to the first. I'm going to completely ignore the bromine. Bromine has no impact. Doesn't show up in the rate law expression. We're not going to see it at all, so we're going to ignore it. 0 0.05. And if we uh, solve for K, we'd have K is equal to 3.8 times 10 to the minus third seconds to the minus one. Now we've got to get our molarity. So it's molarity to the overall order minus one. Well, it's first order, first order, so overall it's two, two minus one is one, so it'd be molarity to the minus one would be our units for K. And again, quite common to give a point, to ask for those units and actually give a point for those units. Now, it says what happens if H plus is maintained? And I change uh, the propanone and the bromine. Well, you know what? I, I really don't care if somebody changed the bromine. You can do whatever you want to the bromine because bromine doesn't show up in the reaction at all. So our K is the same. We're still at the same temperature. So our new rate would be our K value that we calculated in the previous part times 10 to the minus third. Now it said that H plus remains 0.05 and the propanone was 0.1. So you simply take that data and plug it back in. This is the type of problem you wanna be very careful about. Notice that what is being discussed are rates and initial rates in this case, right? Tangent at time equals zero and concentration. The minute you identify you have a rate and a molarity, you know that you're dealing with the differential equations. Okay, that's going to get confusing as we add the next step in. So if we solve for this, we get 1.9 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now just go up here. There's our rate units right there. Molarity per second. Okay. Now that was pretty explicit on concentration. As a scientist, we may say, wow, you know what, I, I really want this to happen slower so it's more controlled. Or maybe I want it to happen more quickly so that I can make more money and up my production. So we can say, well, what, what would happen if I doubled? And what would happen if I tripled? What would be the impact on the rate? Well, our new rate, so rate new, whoops, don't know how I did that. Start fresh, rate new, mind and hand, mouth ahead of hand is what's happening, is going to equal. Now, the Ks would have canceled. So all we have to do is look at the impact, the factor that relates the rate old and the rate new is solely given by the changes in concentration. It's, in effect, we're really taking a ratio of rate laws. So here's what we do. We have our propanone to its power and we have our H plus to its power, its order, okay? Now, we're going to put the numbers that represent the effect in there. So this was doubled, so I'm gonna put a two in here. H plus was tripled, so I'm gonna put a three in here. And so what we find is our new rate would be six times our old rate. We'd increase the rate by a factor of six. Okay, so that's an important consideration is, you know, we study processes and try to determine um, how well they're doing. So, all right, it's enough for this video. Until next time, love ya.